Title, Matt, Part 1. Learning from adult role models who are blind or low vision. Presented by Outreach Programs, the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind. The CSDB logo is displayed with the tagline, Learning, Thriving, Leading. Our presenter, Matt, is standing in front of a brick wall in the CSDB library. Captions are below on screen. Title, Matt. Um, yeah, my name is Matt Simpson. I am 22 years old. I'm originally from uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and I have Leber's congenital amaurosis, which is a uh, s sort of a cousin of, uh, of retinitis pigmentosa. It is a um, congenital retinal condition, um, and it's degenerative. So I was born born with uh, Leber's, and growing up, I had more vision. Um, you know, I could walk around and I could read large print and I could, you know, do most of the functions of everyday life with, with vision. Uh, and when I was probably three years old, they uh, realized that I had a, a vision condition, um, mostly because I started running into things and, <laughs> and that just wasn't right. So they, uh, they figured it out and, uh, you know, since then it's been kind of uh, a steady, steady decline in my vision um, to the point where, you know, today I have a little bit of functional vision with some light perception and some uh, shadows and shapes and and contrast, but nothing really useful um, in you know an academic or a work setting. I graduated in 2012 from Washington and Lee University, which is a small liberal arts uh, college in Lexington, Virginia. Uh, so. Uh, the town school is about 2,000 kids, so a really small school, uh, but it was a great place for me and I uh, was really fortunate to have a lot of academic success there. Um, and in school, I used mostly JAWS, um, a little bit of Braille, but for the most part, everything was uh, auditory. So I, all my textbooks were, uh, you know, RFBND or Bookshare and then on my computer. So uh, I majored in political science and graduated with a bachelor's in political science uh, from there. And currently I am the membership and outreach coordinator for the U.S. Association of Blind Athletes, which is a, a nonprofit organization in Colorado Springs. And we're a member organization of the U.S. Olympic Committee and we do a bunch of uh, national and local programs for people who are blind and visually impaired to promote sports and recreation to them. And besides being an employee of USABA. I'm also uh, an athlete myself and I play on the uh, United States men's national goalball team uh, and I'm training, training hard for that and hoping that uh, when Rio comes along in 2016 that I'll be going down there for, for the Paralympic Games. Title, Tools that Support Individuals Who Are Blind or Have Low Vision. I use, like I said, I use JAWS. I use a lot of speech output, uh, a little bit of Braille. Uh, at my job it's mostly computer-based. Uh, a lot of emails and Word documents and uh, internet documents and a lot, of, a lot of stuff like that. So my ability to function with, uh, with screen reader technology is uh, hugely important. Um, besides that, I use an iPhone, uh, which has been awesome. I use that for work and for everything else too, all of my reading and, you know, whether it be books or magazines that I read or uh, newspapers that I want to read. Uh, all of that is on my phone as well as, you know, navigation. If I need to tell somebody how to get somewhere, if I'm walking somewhere and I need to know, uh, you know, the phone is great for that. Uh, and just countless other ways. So that's pretty much, those are the devices I use. Uh, I use a cane uh, on occasion as well, and then I have a guide dog uh, who I work with all the time. So those are uh, what enable me to function, and uh, it's a pretty, pretty good setup for me. Title, Family Support. Uh, my parents were definitely been hugely important in my development, uh, academically, socially, athletically, all of the above. Um, you know, I, I, they had no idea what to do uh, when I was diagnosed with, with Liebers when, you know, when I was two or three years old. They had no clue what it was to have a child who was blind. Uh, and I have a sister who's four years older and she's not visually impaired and I think that was uh, hugely important for me that I did have uh, you know have that sister and have my parents who forced me all the time to 
uh, not use my blindness as an excuse, not uh, use that as a, a reason for doing anything differently. They uh, continually forced me out into situations where maybe I wasn't the most comfortable or maybe, uh, we, maybe I didn't know or they didn't know exactly what to do or how to do it, but uh, ultimately that has definitely prepared me for, um, for growing up and for you know, living on my own and having a full-time job and being an athlete and traveling independently all over the world pretty much. Um, you know, my sister was an athlete as well, and, and because of her kind of setting the, setting, blazing the path for me, um, you know, I, I was able to, to see what, what that was like. Uh, and my parents always emphasized athletics as something that was important. And, um, you know, when I discovered what goalball was, uh, I immediately loved it and took that up as, as my uh, my thing and you know going to the Paralympics has been my dream since I was little and my parents always emphasized that um, but I think the most important thing any parent of anyone with a disability uh, especially someone who's visually impaired the most important thing a parent can do is sometimes to not do much at all um, <laughs> it's not to say that I was neglected but I think that when a parent steps back from a kid no matter how old the kid is and, and lets them develop and uh, kind of strike out on their own, it hugely benefits the child. Uh, you know, I always had support and I always had, you know, the ride to school or practice or a tournament or, you know, my dad is, our, is my goalball coach. I always had that support, but a lot of times I think the, the best things that my parents did were to let me figure things out on my own. Um, and, you know, like I said, that served me today as, you know, I've moved Two times I've moved thousands of miles away from home, and I live on my own. And don't don't use blindness as an excuse. Don't do anything differently. Have the same expectations or or higher expectations as your peers. Um, that's, you know, academically I was really fortunate. I got a full ride uh, academic scholarship to college, and uh, went to a great school and had a great experience there. And you know, did a lot of things. I was the the leader of our student government and uh, did a lot of stuff like that. That I think, um, you know. I would not have uh, done had I not been forced as a child to really quickly just forget forget what I couldn't do or forget what obstacles were in my way, but to just go after whatever uh, whatever I wanted. Title: Challenges and Opportunities. The greatest challenge to anyone with a disability is uh, interacting with the world around them and educating people about them themselves and their disability uh, you know when you're a kid people definitely are not as uh, sensitive as they could be and not as understanding at times so I think when you do grow up with a disability you kind of develop a, a thicker skin to a lot of things and when I was in school I definitely had to deal with the same thing uh, you know kids didn't understand that I was blind or you know, they didn't understand that just because I couldn't see didn't mean that I couldn't hear them or that I could, didn't understand what was going on around me. So um, I think that's the biggest challenge for anyone is to first figure out uh, how to deal with your disability from a logistical standpoint. You know, how do I walk down the street? How do I uh, read the menu at this restaurant? How do I uh, take notes in class? Those, are, those things are hard for sure, um, but you know, there are a lot of great resources to do that and a lot of great tools, but I think the bigger challenge is the social challenge and, and uh, learning how to present your disability to people in such a way that they're not intimidated by that and that they realize that uh, you're just like they are and that you are not, <laughs> you're not weird or you're not uh, you know, an alien because you have different needs and different capabilities. Teaching people what you need, what you, uh, what your disability means to you, uh, is is a huge challenge. But as you, as I grew up, for sure, um, you know, I realized that, yeah, you know, my blindness is a challenge in a lot of ways. But it's also an opportunity to relate to people on a different level and to kind of show them uh, something that they necessarily probably haven't thought about before, or, or teach them about something that they they aren't aware of. So I, I try to look at that, you know, every time I meet someone new, uh, you know, there's often some frustration because people sometimes don't necessarily uh, understand your disability, but at the same time, it's an opportunity to, to teach them and be an advocate for yourself and for everyone who has a disability.
Learning from adult role models who are blind or low vision has been a production of the Colorado School for the Deaf and the Blind, 33 North Institute Street, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80903, 719-578-2100, www.csdb.org. Videography by Deb Branch and Sean Levier, copyright 2014. Audio description, Jim Olson, editing assistants, Diane Kevington, Dr. Laura Douglas, captioning, Neil Anthony Thomas, Corey McCormick, transcription, Eleanor Vasquez.